All right, we're live. everybody hello it is another happy sunny sunday uh here on the cross and the crescent discussion group i appreciate everybody coming we got a full house already and we haven't even started this show and i am very thankful for everybody uh showing up and i see we got some a lot of people here in the chat uh, uh commenting already so thank you so very much we're also simulcasting over on facebook on those two other pages i have uh, the Cross of the Crescent uh, Discussion Group and the Dr. Eric Smith uh, Facebook page. And we are also on the Global Patriot Radio Network on Blog Talk Radio. And we're here every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time and on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we have uh, a couple of people that don't normally join us that often. Ed Van Halen, we made friends this week. We finally got the friend thing done on Facebook, and I appreciate you reaching out to me on that. And our sister Darcy is here. And we got somebody new, Ask Truth Apologetics. I just saw him over on uh, Dr. Kufar Phobia's show, and I thought I asked him, I said, why don't you invite him over? He sounds uh, interesting. He says, well, the guy's got a wife, and he's got a baby, and he doesn't know if he's going to make it. And if they wake up, then he can't come. I'm like, Pfft. <laughs> he ain't gonna make it. They're gonna always look at Well, I only had to change one diaper, so it was uh, good. I won't tell you if it was the wife or the baby, but uh... I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> that is funny, though. I'll leave it to your imagination. Okay, well, uh, that's something that I just can't get rid of now. Um, mm -hmm. Let's um, let's move on to the topic at hand then, and uh, we'll probably do a lot better. Okay. Uh, I need to. I, I was told earlier that I need to start telling people to um, subscribe, like, and then do the bell thing on the face, not the Facebook page, the, um, this YouTube page. Uh, so subscribe, like, and I'm getting like, I'm not, I don't know, I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I mean, I, I'm getting like a new one every day. So I, I appreciate everybody that subscribes to the network and then uh, goes ahead and lights, but uh, hits the like button. And then plus, I like reading uh, through the comments. Those are always. Uh, really interesting. And share. And, and share. share, yes. And share. Like, there you share, go. and subscribe. <laughs> yes. Is, is that how it is? Like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna you know what? Yeah. I should put that plus, down there at the bottom the instead of the Cross and the Crescent uh, webpage that nobody ever goes to. Um, maybe I should put <laughs> like, share, and subscribe down there and see how that works out. Okay. Today's topic. Today's topic deals with the truth and how it is offensive to some people. Um, and the reason why I say that is because when we talk about the truth about Islam, when we talk about the truth about Muhammad, we talk about the truth about the Quran, 
that offends people when we don't focus on some of the the beautiful things of Islam, the beautiful things of the Quran, the beautiful things that Muhammad said or did, and we only focus in on the negative. Well, if you had somebody that was uh, a philanthropist, let's just take for an example, who was the guy that played Columbo on the TV show? What was that guy's name? Do you guys remember that guy's name? Yeah, that salt and pepper shaker guy, cutie. Handsome man. I forget his name. his name. Peter Falk. <laughs> Peter Falk. There yeah, you go. Yeah, All right, Peter Falk. It. What a likable guy. I mean, what? I mean, just one of the mm -hmm. most likable guys in, in public. And handsome. And, oh, I'm not going to say he's handsome. <laughs> and handsome. I'm a, right, I'm a well, woman, so I can say. Right, let's say. Let's say he's a good looking guy, too. A good looking guy, a nice yeah. guy, nice to everybody. But he kills his wife. If that was his wife that he killed, or some, anyway. Now, nobody thinks that he's a nice yeah. guy anymore, despite all the nice things that he did nope. prior to offing his wife. You know, you know, despite the, the fact that everybody loved him on the TV sets, he played this character that every, you know, that was, you know, everybody loved. And then he's a nice guy, good looking guy. That one thing, they focus on that one thing. And that one thing shows us that he's a murderer. And so nobody likes him anymore. But yet... When we can point out all of these other things about Muhammad that are truthful, according to their own trusted sources, we're the ones that are called haters. We're called racist, bigots, Islamophobes, all these you know nasty little names trying to stigmatize, stigmatize us and, and showing some type of uh, ulterior motive that is not consistent with the normal culture of values and norms of uh, inclusiveness and tolerance. How dare you say that about, you know, somebody that, you know, 1.6 billion people, uh, they don't worship him, mind you, but they all, they do think an awful lot of him. Can so I when jump we... in the... Oh, go ahead, Eric. Sorry. No, nope, go ahead, Chris. I, I got. I was going to head off on another path here, but go on ahead. Yeah, because I, get... I, I want to get into this Islamophobia thing, and um, and you're definitely correct. Look at uh, the slave trade. Let's just say, um, in the United States, people are pulling down uh, statues and everything of these men because of one incident that they own slaves. So therefore, by definition, just because they own slaves, they were bad men, and we need to erase them from history. But if we look into the Quran, Muhammad actually said that you could trade two African-American slaves for one slave of a different color. Now, he's promoting slavery and promoting that the African-American slaves are of lesser value than one of a different skin color in the same sense if these people and these are the people that are doing it these leftists in the united states that are, are claiming islamophobia and things like this we we've seen it on the air on the news and everything if they're consistent they must now want to erase muhammad from history for the exact same reasons and that's all i want to say on that eric no i i i, no, I I understand exactly the the what the uh, the purpose behind that is, and this is in, it's an un it's a hypocritical motive or hypocritical stance on it because if you have Muhammad, Muhammad was he was a slave trader. He owned slaves, he traded slaves, and more importantly, I would say that he enslaved people. So he's taking people who were at one time free, and then enslaving them. Now I'm not trying to you know provide some type of you know, quantitative or qualitative uh, scale here for, you know, what's worse being a slave all your life or being enslaved at some point in time. But what I am saying is that this guy lived in amongst slavery, practiced slavery. And, and, and here's this, here's why we, we mentioned this was because people are commanded to follow his sunnah. They're, they're commanded to follow his example. So, you know, I could care less if he, you know, well, I couldn't say, I shouldn't say that. I didn't care less if he did. I, but I could care less if, you know, people practice slavery in the past, if it weren't for the fact that we could criticize them today for doing it. For example, Jefferson, even though Jefferson, a lot of people don't realize this, when Jefferson was uh, drafting the Declaration of Independence, and he caught a lot of flack from it from 
of all people, Ben Franklin. <laughs> Franklin was giving him a hard time about it. But he even wrote in the Declaration of Independence when he lists those complaints that he has that we had against the king that he's forcing slavery upon us, even though Jefferson himself was uh, uh, owned slaves. He was saying the king is forcing slavery on the colonies, despite the fact that the colonies have vetoed, tried to ban slavery. And so when I look at Jefferson, I could say, yeah, Jefferson, you own slaves. What about that? You wrote in the Constitution, all, all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And yet you yourself did not practice what you preached. But we can we can criticize that. But you cannot criticize Muhammad. And as a matter of fact, if you criticize Muhammad, well, then that's apostasy. That's according to Reliance of the Traveler. You get your head. You can lose, actually lose your head for that. But on it, top it, of that, go ahead. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is, uh, you know, yeah. And I, I do criticize that man for owning slavery and and being such a hypocrite. The difference is, is Islam, if you follow it, it takes your soul to hell. <laughs> Wait, wait, yeah, wait. And where where that's, did that's uh, Jefferson mm -hmm. buy his slaves from? Who where did the, his slaves come from? Yeah, here, yeah, here, yeah. The Muslims, the Muslims, Muslims, right, right. The Muslims hold on, hold on. exactly. Yep, yep. Who still enslave people to this very day? The yep. Africans. A lot of people don't uh, want to make mention of this, but that you're exactly right. The African slave traders were largely Muslims. The richest man to ever live before Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos was a guy, a uh, 14th century king called um, named uh, Manasseh Musa. He's got the coolest name of all time, Manasseh Musa. But he was the richest man to ever live, and he made the majority of his fortune off of the slave trade. Uh, when he made Hajj to Mecca, there's this big legend of he took, I don't know how many hundreds of camels laden with gold to uh, give gifts to kings um, along the way. And another thing, too, is nowadays people want to redefine words. And, and I think that that's one of the worst things about this day and age. And I can go right from the leftists right to the Muslims. Like when you when you speak about somebody being a good person, how do you define good person? Right. Like the Germans during the time of Hitler would have said that Hitler was a good person right the ones that were were with him so is that the same thing is muhammad a good person in the same way or is he a good person in another way so they redefine words uh to suit their to suit their whims also um yasaluna we all know that the word in arabic yasaluna would mean pray in every other instance if it's used for a human being it means pray even if it's used for angels, it means to pray. But now, 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 let's, re re let's redefine the word because it's used by law, right? So, but all of this, what we're doing today, even though we're criticizing an ideology, even though we're criticizing the Quran by nature, we are now, as they would say, we're being Islamophobic, which is a another redefinition of the word. Because truly, Islamophobia isn't something that exists anyways. Um, it's an irrational fear of Islam, basically. Well, there is a rational fear of Islam. There's a rational fear of Sharia. There's a yeah. rational fear of what, uh, of what the ideology of Islam puts on to non-people that accept that ideology. So, yes, there, there, there is rational thought for it. But by definition, Islamophobia would be an irrational fear of Islam. Just because we are criticizing a religion doesn't mean we have an irrational fear of that religion. And that's how they're redefining the word. Now, simply because you want to criticize a religion, you are now you now have an irrational fear of that, or they'll redefine the word Islamophobia to mean anybody that doesn't like our religion. Well, it's the stigmatization that comes along with it is what is 
is, is what has people concerned. You know, that you might as well just call somebody a racist is, is essentially what you're doing. Because if you're saying that somebody has an irrational fear, and it started with homophobia. I mean, let's just be honest about it. It started not about, oh, you criticize homosexuality, despite all the things it does to people's lifestyle. You must have some type of irrational fear of homosexuals. And you don't, but you're just pointing out that it is, is not a natural lifestyle. It's just not something that people should be engaging in. And the same thing here is with Islam. You should not be so sensitive and be so full of butthurt anytime that somebody mentions the fact that Muhammad, when he was 54, slept with little Aisha. You should not be so upset when it, and according to your own sources anyway, your own hadith was an enslaver. You should not be so upset when we make mention of the fact that Muhammad had people killed for daring to criticize him. And but yet, that when makes you do, a murderer. You're the, right, it, exactly right. And that, and, but the thing is, is that you're the one that is stigmatized. You were the one that is given that label, that 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 label that is essentially saying that you are a racist for daring uh, to criticize our religion. So, what I want to do today, what I want to do today is, I just want to uh, give you kind of an illustration of some of the the, the abject horrific things that we find not only in the Quran, but also in the life of Muhammad that causes people to say, now, wait a second. There's no way in Hades that the Quran can be true. There's no way in Hades that Muhammad could be a prophet. I just want to go through a laundry list here with you. And then uh, can I add people... something, Eric? Can I add something, John, here? Yes, go ahead, John. Yeah, uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, can a bad person do something good? Yes. We see many bad people can like love their families, love their sons, kids, and take care of uh, other people, but they are doing a lot of bad things. Then as a whole, he is a bad person. Uh, then uh, this is a, a reply for the people who are asking, uh, telling us that we are Islamophobe. We don't uh, see the, the good things that Muhammad did, but there is, as you say, there is a big long list of bad things that Muhammad, then we take it as a whole, not uh, the good things and ignore the bad or the other. We take it as a whole and we decide. Uh, this is a point that I would like to speak. Yeah, and it, you're exactly right. yeah, you're exactly right, John. When people, um, you know, just because they do a hundred good things, if you're a murderer, that still makes you a murderer. And what is what is so astonishing here in this case is that when you point out that they're a murderer, then you're the one that is the bad guy. You're the one that has some type of irrational uh, fear of that person. No, it's a rational fear. As this Chris pointed out, it's a rational fear because if you look at the number of uh, 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 terroristic attacks that have occurred since 9-11, it's up over 40,000 now for crying out loud. So there is kind of this common ideology that leads, leads to violence, that leads to people trying to implement and apply uh, the Sharia, which we've talked about several times on this show and how uh, antithetical it is here to Western civilization. Uh, but when, we st when, we, when you point it out, as I said, you should not be calling people names or telling them that they have some type of psychological disorder, some type of phobia for having a, a rational fear of some of the things that happen within that, uh, within that religion. And one of the things that, that I wanted to, to focus on today is that when the truth is said, and this is the key thing, when the truth, when somebody says the truth and you are offended by the truth, then there perhaps is a problem with your, with your thinking, with your ideology. And here's, here's a great example. I remember a number of years ago, uh, I was reading, uh, I think it was Dan Wall, one of Dan Wall's books. And in it, he mentions the fact, maybe it's James White, doesn't matter. They mentioned the fact that the, the the story of the lady caught in adultery is not in the earliest manuscripts. That the story of uh, John in chapter seven through eight, where it's it's the most one of the most beautiful stories in in all of the New Testament in the Bible itself, uh, where this woman she's caught in adultery and Jesus says, "Look, hey yo, you guys want to stone her? Go ahead and have at it. But you first thing you have to do is that you have to make sure that you are without sin." And we look at that and we think, "Oh my God, that is such a beautiful application of the Mosaic law." What are we doing trying to stone other people for their, their sins when we, we self, our, ourselves are so sinful? Uh-huh. 
But it's not in the earliest sources. It's not in those earliest manuscripts. It looks like this has been an insertion, a redaction into the Gospel of John. Right. Uh, somebody even said that it was over in the Gospel of Luke at one time, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm thinking, you mean this is just something that was thrown in the Bible? And that offended me to my core. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is, you can't do th-. And I felt anger over that. But then I started thinking about it. What does that have to do with my eternal salvation? What does that have to do with Jesus Christ? Does that change any of my core beliefs? Is that no? It doesn't. Does it affect any of the core teachings of the church? <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you're right. It doesn't. Nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you start looking at it, and you know you can see that Papias makes mention of this, and Papias knew John. So maybe somebody got a hold of one of Papias's writings and inserted it there. Who knows what happened with it? But it's still a good story. But it, I was offended by the truth. But I was able to evaluate it. And I didn't call up Jimmy White and say, hey, yo, I'm coming to your house. And I'm going to burn. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bust down your door. I'm going to kill your dog. I'm going to burn it to the ground. I, do, I wouldn't do that at all. But that's kind of what they want to do to people who point out these things about Muhammad. So let's take a look at some of these uh, things that we find in the Quran uh, that are very problematic. Okay. Uh, let's start with, um, what Jesus said about truly, truly said before Abraham, I was now that made the Jews very upset. It was offensive to them. How dare you equate yourself with God? And what did they try to do right after that? They tried to stone him right after that. Whoops. Laser pointer. There we are. Sorry. And they, so they tried to throw He it, said, um, I am. He said, I right. am. Okay. You said I, I was. Right so I, I'll just oh. correct you. Sorry. Oh, did I say I was? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, kind of, okay. That is offensive. Get it right, Catherine. Yeah, right. I got it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But this was very <laughs> offensive to them, so they went to pick up stones. Why? Because he was climbing to be God. And so when you hear this often made claim, that, where does Jesus say, I am God, worship me? Well, he says that he's God basically right here in John eight fifty eight. Okay, so if you want to look at the truth, you look at um, a little uh, philosophical uh idiom here is called Occam's razor and that one any idea where one of the ideas I'm sorry uh, uh, when any of the ideas uh, requires the least speculation is usually better so when we think about what we find in the Quran what we think when we think about what uh, when we think about the stories what what makes better sense when we think about those stories that are inserted in the Quran, and I'm going to go through a laundry list of them here. I'm not going to take a lot, a lot of time. What, what is, what, what, what makes better sense that Muhammad is receiving this revelation from God, and this revelation is through the angel Gabriel, and now he's a prophet outside of all the prophets of Israel ever to come before. He's preaching a message that is antithetical to the, to the Bible. He's contradicting the Bible everywhere you possibly can. And this is supposed to be the truth because the Bible has been so corrupted, the same Bible that existed at the time that he lived as we have today. Or he was hearing these stories around the campfires from other people, and then he was trying to pass them off as his own divine revelation. What makes better sense? Well, Occam Razor says it's the latter. He heard these things, Mm -hmm. passed himself on as a prophet, contradicts, and even got the stories wrong, for crying out loud. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Yeah, it even goes as far as to confirm the Bible over and over and over again. Yeah, how does he do that if he's contradicting mm-hmm. it? How can you confirm something that you contradict? That'd be yeah. a great question for somebody to answer that. Uh, yeah, and one imam says, where is that in the Quran? Where? And it's where everywhere. What? It's in so many places. Where's what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where is where the Quran confirms the Bible? Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's chapter 61, I believe. it's Many uh, places. Yeah. Yeah. At at least least a handful. They try to split hairs and they try to say the Bible or the Torah and the gospel. See, this is where it gets stupid. Okay. They try to split the hairs with it and say, oh, well, it just says Torah and gospel. Well, excuse me. The, The gospel is based on the Torah and everything before it. Yep. Yep. Well, even with even with with, with the Torah, I mean, or I'm sorry, the gospel. He contradicts the gospel. The gospel clearly states that Jesus Christ died on a cross. And when you look at 4157, 4157 says that he did not. So which one is true? Who would we believe? We believe. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, and here's the, here's the crazy part. People, even at that time, 
knew that he was making it up. They, were, they called it the Tales of the Ancients. So you got in 625, these are not uh, else, the Tales of Fables of Men of Old. That's one time. Uh, how about two times? Lo, this not be Fables of Men of Old, Chapter 8. Uh, chapter 68, Mere Fables of Men of Old. Is this and, a book, Eric? No, this is straight out of the Quran. Uh, okay. Oh, or the, the, you've got the picture, the tales, the fairy oh, right, tales. Right. Is that a book? Google. I don't know what that is. That's it's just a picture. Google. Okay, I got yeah, it. Thank you. And, and, as, <laughs> and, I was, and, I was, and as I was mentioning earlier, uh, like in, as in verse 625, there are um, several non-Arabic words of Greek Syriac origin in that verse. Yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. If it's supposed to be a book written in pure Arabic, why do you find non-Arabic? Well, Injil itself is not uh, an Arabic word either. It's a uh, it's a Greek word, if I'm not mistaken, it has Greek origins. Okay, so these are tales of ancients. Um, the book, I'm not sure where the book originates from. You might want to go onto Amazon to see if see if that is quest for or quest of the ancients fairy tales. I don't know. Maybe the, uh, I don't know if that's an actual book or not. But anyway, you see a pattern here where he's accused of this time and time and time again, saying that you were just, you know, just repeating these old, these old stories that everybody knows that they're nothing more than stories. Because when we look at these uh, extra chronic stories that are, are these stories that are um, out from that come from outside of the Quran, that predate the Quran, how can they be revelations from God if they have already preexisted on other uh, in other manuscripts or any other scripts or any uh, 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 well books that pre predate Islam, how can that be? It has anachronisms in, and we're just going to go through the short list of anachronisms today because it's just there's just so many, and it has historical inaccuracies. And plus, you know, Muhammad received all kinds of convenient revelations that anybody that cannot recognize that these are revelations of convenience really is coming at it from an unobjective. Um, point of view. All right, so you have Syriac folklore, you have stories from the Jewish Talmud and Midrash, you have Gnostic and, and uh, apocryphal sources, and among other sources. A great source for this is, uh, let me see here, where did it go? I just had it. A great source for the, oh yeah, I was just written here, this, this right here, the original sources of the Quran. This is a great book. If you want to get this, it's a uh, uh, William By uh, William St. Clair Tisdale. I don't know if you could read that on there. Okay. Saint yeah, Clair looks Tisdale. good. It's a great book. I've got, I've gone through this and I got, um, I'm going to add to this slideshow based on the sources that I, that I get out of that book, but there's all the others. He, he also, he's here's the thing. He's got a bibliography just saying where he actually, uh, cites his sources. Okay. Uh, where are we going here? Let's go back to the slideshow okay so let's look at the uh where you get from the jewish talmud now do you to understand the difference between the jewish talmud and the midrash um the, the the talmud is your ceremonial law civil law um and then the midrash is the commentary on part of hebrew scriptures so just know that the talmud is your uh the the law that is derived from uh, the scripture and then the midrash is just a commentary on the scripture so when we look at midrash sanhedrin uh we find in surah 532 now th think about this just just for a second let me let me take the camera off here i just want you to think about what surah 532 says anytime that somebody says that islam is peace don't you know we teach peace and how to treat people fairly after all go to uh chapter 5 verse 32 because it says if anyone killed a person not in retaliation for murder uh to spread mischief in the land is be if he killed all mankind if anyone saved a life it would be if he saved all saved all of mankind well the problem with that is that if muhammad is actually saying this he's ripping it off from the midrash sanhedrin if you look at the midrash sanhedrin it, ex it essentially says the same exact thing. But what the mu what uh, Muslims often do in this is they leave the very beginning of that uh, verse off because if you read the very beginning of it, and they always misquote it, and they do it purposely because they know if they, if they quote it correctly, they'll understand that the very first verse says, because we are ordained for the children of Israel. This does not apply to Muslims. 
This applies to the children of Israel. So number one, he's ripping it off from the Midrash saying he had 9.5. Number two, it does not apply to Muslims. And number three, can anybody find, uh, read chapter, the very next verse in the Quran? Quran? Yeah, it's, uh, surely the reward of those who war against Allah and his messenger and go about to vandalize on the earth is only that they will be killed or crucified or have their hands and legs cut off on opposite sides or they will be banished from the earth. This is the disgrace of this world and in the hereafter they will have great torment and this is is the uh, Sama Dakdak translation. Yes, the generous. Yes, the generous. Uh, 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 what is that called? I got it right. I got it right. Got it right. Got it right. <laughs> but but if, if, you, if you think, you think about, 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 about this, can you mute can yourself, you yourself Ed? Because I think, cause I think this is where I'm getting the where... feedback from. There we go. Thank you, sir. Um, the God of the universe is prescribing crucifixion as a punishment for spreading corruption. Now, the word, I don't know what, if it would, what, what, uh, Usama's translation was, but it, corru cor corruption is, is an Ill, undefined word. What could corruption mean? Well, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, in Mecca. That could be considered fitna or spreading corruption. Just about anything that you would want to. Now, if you're going to, you know, if you can be crucified for something, then that's very problematic. Especially if you have the God of the universe prescribing that, cutting your hands and your feet off of the opposite ends. I thought this was supposed to be the law for all time, or at least something that has come to confirm the gospel message uh, that came before it. It doesn't sound it like it to me. It sounds like he ripped this off. Well, it doesn't sound like it. He obviously ripped this off. He plagiarized. Most people want to say that I have to say borrowed. No, he plagiarized it. It doesn't say borrow. Okay, so this is from the Jewish commentary. Five points of congruence here. And this is most uh, uh, quoted verse when bad things happen, like terrorist attacks, or you get that, who's that guy down in uh, Florida that shot up that nightclub, killed 50 people uh, to include himself. This is what was uh, cited here in the, uh, I think it was the Gazette. Um, okay. And then, oh, there it is. Doggone it. I wouldn't even had, if I would have been paying attention to my own slide show, I wouldn't have had to. Uh, <laughs> uh, put that sorry but here is a strive upon the earth and that they be to wage okay indeed the penalties of wage war against allah to cause corruption there's that word right there corruption okay next one sir 531 the one right before 532 so here you have a raven adam and eve sitting by the corpse wept not knowing what to do for they had not yet not our yet knowledge of a burial a raven came up so ooh, you got a bird not just any bird, but a specific bird. Now think about this: this is a targum uh, that's a date that predates the Quran by uh, five centuries. And then it scratched the ground. Oh, look at there! It scratched at the earth. And it was going to hide body of of Abel. Well, what do you have? Um, I don't know. I mean, if you start off with an animal, why why wouldn't you have like like what animal do we know of or commonly know buries things? Do we consider birds animals that bury things? We would think maybe of a dog, mm -hmm. uh, a squirrel. I guess they don't have squirrels in Saudi Arabia. They don't have much in Saudi Arabia. Come to think about it, um, so maybe it was a good thing. Well, the dogs. Okay, dogs. Well, you don't want to use a dog in this because dogs are haram anyway. Um, <laughs> but it isn't just any animal. It's a bird. And it just isn't any specific type of or any particular bird. <clears throat> it is a raven, a specific bird. And then when you get to it, what, what are the both? What do they have the, the, the bird doing? The bird is burying the body. So this is nothing more. This is nothing more than a pre-existing story of uh, the, the, the murder of Abel by Cain being passed off as some type of divine revelation. So you have a bird, not just any bird. You have a raven, not just uh, any raven, but you have a raven showing them how to bury a body, not just any body, but the body of Cain. So there you have a clear indication of something being ripped off. Um, I'm sorry, borrowed uh, once again. You know, about that, you know, it's it makes me think that whoever wrote the Quran on this were really insulting the the intelligence of the Arabs in that era, in that land, you know, yeah. I mean. 
Well, they didn't t- think if, that if, if you have Muhammad, if you have Muhammad specifically saying, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, in, in the Quran, it's actually put in the Quran. These are tales of ancients. Now, what, if he's saying something here, this is supposed to be from God, from Gabriel, saying, "Look, these are nothing more than tales of ancients. The people around me are criticizing me, and God is telling the people, don't criticize him. I'm telling you that these are not just tales of ancients." These are, mm-hmm. this is an actual revelation. And you're thinking, who believes this? Mm-mm. And you're exactly right. Uh, yeah, they're I, insulting their intelligence. Yeah. And then now Muslims' intelligence. And that's that's why we stand up for the Muslims, too, saying, look, you know, th- this is insulting your intelligence. You're smarter than this. Let me see. Who's this? Uh, I'm... I, uh, what is this? Muhammad seems to have cited these known events to attempt to call the recognized tales already known as on it. Yep, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, Milos, thank you for coming. Uh, Dominic, did you get my message? I see you're in chat. Did you get my message with the StreamYard link? If you did not, let me know and I'll jump over there and, um, and resend it to you. But you should see it was in that that chain that that met, you know what I'm talking about the I am group that we're in. Okay. Facebook uh, Messenger. Yeah, there you go. That's what I meant. I cannot be a Muslim for Muslim. Okay. All right. So let's look at this one. Oh my goodness, Solomon and uh, the Queen of Beersheba and his birds. Solomon gave orders, I will send the king the armies against these. Okay. So you have birds being sent. Okay. And we can't see it, Eric. Why not? We can't, we can't see it, sir. Why can't you? There it is. Now it's on I'm there. Not, I'm not sharing my screen. My <laughs> There's a reason why you can't see it. Uh. All right, let's jump back over here. Okay, so you have um, the red cock, which is the hoopty bird. Um, let's see here. Among the absences, but the hoopty is tarred. Then you got uh, Peard, the presence of the king, of Sh- the queen of Sheba. And a woman ruling over there in this one. So you have, it was ruled by a woman over here in the Targum of Esther. And here's what gives it away. Let me see here. What is it that gives it away? Now it sends you, okay. Because I'm not going to sit here and bore you with all these um, phrases. But look at here. She thought it was a lake of water here at the end. She thinks it's a, 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 it's a glass floor was water. So she lifts up her garments, tucks up her skirt, and uncovers her legs. So if you're going to try to say that that is not a direct ripoff from a story, then you really need to get help. Because every single one of these, I'm showing at least five, six, and in this case, maybe nine points of congruence here, where you have similarities within the story. It's basically telling the same story, but these facts, these specific facts that give it away that it was plagiarized, keep popping up. All right. uh, Let me jump over here and do this real quick for Dominic. Uh, Copy Dominic. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not... What we were saying the other day, I don't like dead air. Whose was that? I think that was on Kufar Phobia's Yep. Network when I was over there and he says, oh, no, that capper, he doesn't like dead air. It's kind of like dead air on the radio. Because when people aren't listening to anything, you lose, they lose interest. So you got to at least say something for Pete's sake. All right, let's jump back over to this. <laughs> okay, second target of Esther is a second century document. How do you see Solomon, Queen of Sheba, castle, bird, floor of glass, thought to be water, lifting her dress. Does this passage meet the test of Occam's razor as being divinely inspired? No. It sounds to me like he has ripped this off from uh, a different source. Uh, Yeah, and that really makes his Allah look so bad. Like Allah doesn't even have an original thought in his head, you know, so he's got to be a thief, you know. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, I I make the same claim. You know, I I don't have – I don't have an original thought every, you know, for the most part. I'm not, I'm not all that <laughs> bag of chips when it comes up with originality. But hey, I you're messing claim, up my analogy here. Well, now, no, 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 no. You're, <laughs> I, I don't claim to be a prophet of God, though. 
well, if I was just thinking of being a prophet of God, I'd be looking in some books that nobody's ever written. I'm saying, I thus say it the Lord. And oh, nobody's ever heard of that guy. And I, and I would be reading from somebody that was dead. Because <laughs> what, what, what I find fascinating about these sources is they're all Syriac sources. And they're all Jewish, or they're all post. So, so it, it was just kind of linking the the, the kind of connections, uh, the, the the connections between things. Because essentially, Muhammad must have been sitting in a library. He must have like, pulled out which book he kind of wanted, which manuscripts from the actual different 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 sources. Well, so the, the, it, the key thing is is that they had to exist in Arabia prior to the Quran. And this is how we know that we know that they, they they existed in Arabia, and we know that they these sources, all of the sources, uh, predate the Quran. Because um, because it can't be. Because I was thinking, was it is it something like the Alexandrian Library that they pulled all the sources from, or maybe maybe because I, I know there's some ancient Syrian libraries that they could have literally got these kind of sources from. Well, I was we, just, I, I, I was just thinking whether there's a connection between all of them whether you've got whether there's an actual whether there's like a link between all the sources because it's just because they're not randomly chosen they're not like that's well that's if, what you, if, you're, if you're talking well I, I understand what you're saying uh and if you're into this this new and growing more <laughs> popular by the day <laughs> idea that the quran developed over time and you get to the Alexandrian library and you say, okay, well, let's, you know, grab as many documents as we possibly can and then, and then burn them to the ground and then have yeah. those, those stories redacted back into the Quran. Well, then that, th that would make, make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. That would, that would be, that would be a, that would, that, 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 would be, that, that, would, that, that would be a thesis. But the thing is with the, cause with the last source he quoted, it's, it's Syriac. And then the previous one was the Syri uh, I think I read the the Syri Syriac of Jonathan of Target, but the uh, the previous one is the Babylonian Talmud, because the latest manuscripts of that is twelfth century. So, but the thing is, I'd, I'd have to look up the manuscripts of what, because what time period the the stuff is is because essentially, if they if they're choosing sources, it's why are they choosing these sources? Well, the Targum of Esther second century. Um, what was yeah. the, uh, these other ones that I had here? Uh, John, uh, Jonathan Ben Uzziah. When is that data? That's that's second century, uh, late, uh, late second century, early third century. Um, Midrash Sanhedrin. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to go clear back in the slideshow to see that. It, they they, they predate it by centuries. They do. One thing, one thing that I was trying to find is, is, is there any sources that they quote is, is actually later than the life of Muhammad? Um, not that I'm aware of. There was one source. That, uh, now that you mentioned that, there was one source, one story. And I can't remember what it uh, what it was off the top of my head, but it is credited with being the middle seventh century, or the beginning to the middle seventh century. Yeah. So it could have been the, the argument goes, the Islamic apologetic goes. Well, the this story is derived. We know Muhammad existed. We know the Quran was being published at the time. Why? Because this story was borrowed from the Quran. But there's a time span for the development of this story, and I can't remember. Um, I can't remember which one it was. I'd have to. I'd have to look. But I, I understand what you're trying to say. What, what you're saying here. Do we find stories in the Quran? Are in the Quran that were developed or uh, dated after the Quran, and yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Maybe somebody that uh, is a wizard or smart <laughs> in the chat, or in the, yeah. In the and room. why would anybody want to do that? It's absurd <laughs> thinking, right? Yeah. It's but stupidity. Because, yeah, because 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 mm -hmm. the thing is, I I because I'm, I'm just thinking of canonization. Because with the Bible, you can fairly date. Okay. With the, with the Bible, you know that everything was written before, or other than the book of Revelation, you know everything was roughly written before 70 AD. But with the, because most of the manuscripts, like uh, the Bible manuscripts, are such as in the Chester Beatty Library and things like that, they're actually together. So you have the manuscripts of Paul and you have the manuscripts of the New Testament there that they tend to be together. So, but the thing is with, with the Quran, there's no actual official canonization. So there's no, there's no like 
it, it's almost like a, a a mishmash of a, a mishmash of an anthology that was just it, it it just doesn't make sense like the like the way that it was compiled because some people that was like a Nestorian things but it's just mm-hmm. very weird sources it's very weird source like the the story of queen like the one that you would just brought up now the story of queen shiva it's like such an absurd such an absurd kind of story it's like uh yeah sorry and, well back. it's divine revelation don't you see and don't yeah. you dare doubt it, because if you do doubt it, then you're an Islamophobe, and that's kind of the point we're making here. We're pointing out these truths, and if they're offensive, then you need to figure out, you need to get a different apologetic to defend. We had Asana on here. I don't know if you guys remember Asana. And Asana was saying, no, that those phrases were only uh, uh, targeted at those people who were um, criticizing Muhammad's interpretation of Scripture. And they had nothing to do with Syriac folklore, Midrash, Talmud, uh, things of that nature. Now, ask truth. Because the latest, because 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 the yeah. earliest manuscript of the Talmud dates from the 12th century. So the earliest manuscript of that dates from that. I think the 12th century kind of things like that. But it's it, it's hard to find because with the Talmud, you have a uh, different time period. So you have there's different authors for different things. So you can date the Talmud by, by different writers. So mm-hmm. you have Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, who's kind of, first of all, then you have some other writers who are kind of later on. So that, that that's what I, I, I've, I've been wanting to work out. It's like, which writers kind of dated the actual Talmudic references? Because if, if, if the Talmud is, if the Babylonian Talmud is all the way over a thing, and then you've got the Syriac Targum, how on earth did they mm-hmm. get together? I mean, I mean, how on earth were they compiled in in that in that thing? So you've you've got sources that that well, like how were, Talmud, are you asking how were how were they compiled and then that resulted them in gaining getting into the Quran? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because you've got like I, I mean, so say if, say if the say if the Quran is written in say in say I can't remember which which are in Babylon. Right. So, well, so, so, so you, yeah, so, so you've got the Talmud that's that's. The, the, they use a Talmudic source in, in in Babylon, and then they use, say, the Syriac sources from a, from another area. Somehow that they've got to compile these two together to actually get the get the thing. So you've got a problem with the actual source. So because when they were talking about the Hadiths, like when they were saying, okay, the, the Hadiths, the writers are here, 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 and here, mm-hmm. you almost got the same problem with the different sources in the actual thing that someone would actually have to compile them to actually together. I don't. I don't know where they would have gotten it from. I. I have no idea. And let's not forget <laughs> that the Quran uh, was abrogated more than it was added to. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm exactly. not even touching on the rule of abrogation today. That 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 didn't even make the slideshow. But that's you're absolutely right, Ed. I mean, that's and, just... and it and it also makes the Quran uh, to be a lot older than what they claim it to be. Yeah, we talked about that last because week. Because of we what it has the, in it, yes. Because yeah, of those stories about, that you're yeah, showing. We talked about the Quran that predates the Quran from the third century. Yeah, four, yes, yeah, four hundred thirty-eight or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah five hundred. Okay, what do you mean by this uh, Alexander romance? Um, what do you mean by that? Which one? What story is that? Uh, well, no, the, the Alexander, like dual, dual Carnain. Um, Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. we were we were asking the questions about um, if anything was written after the Quran, um, and as I was thinking, it, it's been a minute since I've looked into it. Um, but I, I believe that the the Alexander Romance version of uh, like dual Carnain that matches up with the Quran is actually a later. Mm-hmm. It, it appears after the Quran. So someone basically wrote it in Arabic, the Alexander Romance, and changed it to align more with the Quran. Now, which, which <laughs> are you talking about? And are you talking about where they build this big wall, where he finds the sun setting in the muddy pool, or what? Um, the exact details, I'm not sure. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've looked into it. Um, I believe, yes, the wall, Gog and Magog, uh, his quest for uh, the water of life, etc., etc. Um, those things seem to appear in the Alexander Romance post uh, the Quran, and I don't believe that they're pre-Quranic. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, and what we see today actually is more along the 9th and 10th century. Uh, it's not go. the 7th and 8th. So, really, this is the addition. It, what we have today is not what they had back then. And Jay Smith spends a lot of time talking about it, him and Al Fadi. Well, they've, oh, yeah, yes. he, he's been drilling oh, yes. down. They've been making all <laughs> kinds of videos on that. Almost every day there's one coming out. And they're really yeah, interesting. They're proving to, these to things. To. I mean, yeah, well, I'd like, to, I'd, like to look at, mm-hmm. but I'd like to look at their sources. Um, you know, you always want to look at the, you know, what sources that they're using in order to, you know, to they drive. They need to bring their, Jay Smith on here. Alpha D is like well, busy, you know busy, I take a busy. Class but... with him every Monday night. I'm, I'll ask him tomorrow night. I'll say, yeah. hey, you know, look, I sit here for two hours every interview. Monday night. You could spend at least an hour with me on a Sunday mm-hmm. afternoon. He comes on Steve's show, so hello. <laughs> and he's a, he's a great talker. Jay is just friendly as can be, and uh, and and brings out the. Uh, you know, the references that the Muslims need to know to make an educated guess. Well, that, that, that those are kind of ax, oxymoronic uh, terms there, so be careful. Well, we're laying it out there like a red carpet for them to okay. choose the truth, you know. You know, Eric. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, educated guess, and you're talking about the uh, Quran in the same breath. You got to be careful how you use your term. Okay. Not let's educated jump. guess. I said make an education. I didn't say educational guess. I thought you said educated guess. No. What did you to say? To be, uh, um, well, what did I say? To make an educa- educational um I don't know. Maybe I did say guess, but I did not mean the word guess. Just make an educational uh, understanding. Well, so if I said both, yes, both, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Well, no, no. The bottom line I, is I'm doing an Eric. Right. I'm doing an Eric. Sorry, I did an Eric. What, you forget something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I said the word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Actually, okay, I think I did say educational guess, but that was a wrong word. But just right. just to be educated and make the right choice. Okay, let's go ahead and jump back over to the Quran and we're going to look at is somebody talking. Yeah, it's me. It's Who's me? me? I haven't spoken for a while. It's me. Who I'm is sorry. this? One quick point. It's Adam. No, it's Isa Kabir. You Issa. Speak up, though. Yeah, you yeah, speak up louder. I can't hear you. Uh, my question was about like the Alexander the Great situation. I think it's kind of fascinating because I've heard that narrative before, and. Some people really just disagree that it even occurred because of um, the situation with um, that Alexander of Macedonia was a polytheist. So people, so I've, I've heard that that's something that's wrestled around with. And it's interesting that there are people who do believe that this uh, Blue Car 9, this mythological being, uh, this character who found like the Fountain of Youth, some even said that he may have traveled with Kidder. It's actually really interesting. I haven't heard that story in a long time. I think it was just fascinating to hear that. So just kind of where do people stand on that here in this panel is do people think that Vulcar 9, according to the text, would be referring to Alexander the Great? Or is it some other character? Some people said Cyrus, or is it, you know, just mythological being like I believe most of the test fear, if if and I am willing to be wrong on that, but um uh, I'm, I'm thinking most of the tasks fear a tribute that to that characterization as Alexander the Great. Um, you know, yes. and, and to say that Alexander the Great was a monotheist is probably <laughs> the silliest <laughs> assertion that somebody can make. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is, is, can, I add something here? can I add something about uh, the, the person who was here? Is, if it's Alexander the Great or someone else? Yeah, go because, ahead. Yeah, Quran says that this guy is a good guy in front of Allah, in, in, in the eyes of Allah. And uh, we know that Alexander the Great was pagan and Cyrus was uh, uh, also pagan. Okay, then which one is mentioned in Quran? No one knows. This is why we can see in the tafsir many ideas, a lot. No, There, there is a lot of idea from all Muslim scholars about this guy and no one knows till now. So Allah wasn't clear, huh? Yeah, all all is good Torah. The school, the Surah <laughs> Al-Kahf. Right, yeah. The Surah Al Surah Al Kahf, Surah 18. It, mm-hmm. uh, it happened. Uh, a reason of revelation, like the Jews ask uh, Muhammad three questions, 
and he answered uh, this surah, the, this whole surah, after 14 days from the questions. Although he said that he said second day he will answer, but there is no answer. Really, if you read the, the surah, there is no single answer for these three questions at all. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for that, John. You're, you, see, this is what I love about having you know all you guys on the panel. I mean, you all bring all these <laughs> facts together, and it makes us all feel smart because one of the yeah. one of the most interesting things has been is it been well sleep? we want the muslims to be smart that's the thing is we're trying to bring information to them for them right. to choose the truth and be honest about islam because one of the, one of the most interesting things was recently was that the i think it was sneakers corner finding out that the muslims were actually going to tombs to worship at, at like muhammad's tombs and like 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 idolatry was it was only ruled out in the 18th, 19th century. And like previously before in like the 14th century, they were all actually, they were all actually, um, uh, actually having, um, wor worshiping idols, like before that time period. It's, it's only recently that they've actually stopped, they've actually stopped doing it. So which is- Well, don't they, doesn't it say in the Quran that you're not, that they, the reason why they destroy tombs is to prevent people from worshiping at tombs. Doesn't it? I mean, doesn't it specifically say that someplace? That's that's. I think that I think that I think is um, in the actual hadiths. But the thing is, they said that I think um, okay. um, Mel was saying like literally, there's so there's like these paintings because he, he showed us the paintings of like Muhammad from like the 14th century and some that's of the right. Right, right. and then some, it, some, incur, it includes yeah. Muhammad. Include very yeah. distinct pictures of people. Yeah. So, if, do, do you know? Uh, do you know the site Corridor Digital? So, have you have you seen that site? There's a there's a, there's a YouTube channel called Corridor Digital, and what they do is they take, you, well, you you can do this with AI, so you can take photos and you can turn them into real life people using. The, I, I was I, or, I was because I I was um I um I um I was I was suggesting to Mel to actually put them on a, like a t shirt, like have have those uh, early paintings on a t shirt, like uh, of. Of, of Bob Mohammed or, or turn his face into like a real human face of like um, Mohammed. And, tell, and are you telling Mel to go to Speaker's Corner wearing one of those? <laughs> yeah. Then, then, Somebody got we, stabbed for doing that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that wasn't a good thing. No, but the, but the thing is, but the thing is, what I would be interested in, in is, is um, among those archaeological ruins, whether there's any any pig bones. Because I mean, how on earth, how how far does the halal rules, or even the seven pillars of Islam, how how far does that actually go? Was was is, was that a redaction later? Was that an actual kind of thing? Was was that something purely? Because if there's pig bones in some of the archaeological rec like records, that would prove that they've been eating eat, like the Umayyad period. They may have been eating pigs or stuff, stuff like that, which would be completely ab abhorrent. Or, or just to, because if you've got stuff like idols and stuff like that, what what other stuff? Is is considered um, non haram, non -halal. Haram. right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah haram. Haram. So what? What other stuff? So, so well, don't they I mean, eat camels? Camels are supposed to be haram according to the Levitical law. You're not supposed to eat a camel. But what? Are, what are they doing? They're munching down on Huey the camel. There. Every yeah. time you turn around, they're making videos of them trying to kill camels <laughs> or sacrifice them for crying out loud. And okay. drinking their urine and drinking their urine. Come on. I'm out, as a matter of fact. Later. Hey, where's your urine at today, ma'am? Eric, uh, dude? Did you give it up? Know, well, thankfully, that supply <laughs> that was sent to me is running out, and I won't have to <laughs> deal with it anytime soon. It's on back order. They're finding the camels to make it. <laughs> Uh, could you imagine having that? I don't even want. Okay, let's, just, let's just move on. I'm not go. <laughs> what do you do for a living? <laughs> Good night. Okay. Hey, if it pays well. Okay. All right, John. You tell me what amount of money is worth doing that. Oh, let's see. I don't know. Maybe ten thousand dollars a squirt. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that would no, no. I'm not. I'm not done with that struggle. I'm going to retire um, <laughs> in Tahiti yeah, before I. Uh, there's just no way that I would ever do that. I don't know. Okay, let's uh, get back to business here. Let's go back to the Quran, chapter 19, verses 22 through 26, and here we have Mary, uh, Mary, and little Jesus. 
from the lost books of the Bible, which is dated to the fifth century. And she's giving birth under a palm tree. Let's see. Desert under a shade of a palm tree. And in her anguish, laden with fruit, dates, and the babe Jesus said, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. The babe cried unto her from below. And Jesus looked up from below with a cheerful smile and said to the palm tree. And here you have the same thing, Jesus talking to the palm tree. So you have a pseudo-Matthew uh, story. This is a Gnostic story from the 5th, 4th, 5th century. Do we ever see this story wow. in the Bible? We don't find this story in the Bible. No, well, this, it would be neat if it was, though. But you have a palm tree. You have Jesus speaking. And you're, you're having Jesus give up the dates. Now, you're going to tell me that is not a ripoff. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I start, Occam's razor is going to have to apply there. Let's go to a little bit further in that chapter. And the infancy gospel of Jesus, um, where he speaks from the cradle. Jesus spake in the cradle. And I am the slave of... Notice how he changes... Um, how he changes the character of Christ, even when he's ripping stories off. Look at what he's doing. I'm a slave of Allah. I am Jesus, the son of God, the word. Yeah, if he becomes you, more Islamic, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he's nothing, he's nothing, like he's nothing, he's nothing more than an excuse for Muhammad is all he mm -hmm. is. Yeah, exactly. And who's speaking in uh, 1933? What do you mean 1933? What's that? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I thought you meant 1933, like the year, like Hitler and coming. Oh, no, you see you're talking okay. about. What are you talking about, Ed? What was, we didn't get to 1933. Yeah, 1933 says, and the peace be on me the day I was born and the oh, yeah. day oh, yeah. I die, the day I die and the day I am raised alive. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's the that's order. The <laughs> <laughs> hear, hear that dear muslims that's the order of all of us we die we're buried we raise again you know it's that simple the quran is even showing you this even wouldn't, through a fake isa wouldn't that wouldn't that contradict surah 4 verse 133 so if they're compiling two different sources and that's that islam yeah that's well, I islam haven't, it I contradicts haven't even itself. Gotten, right <laughs> I, I i haven't even gotten to the internal contradictions that you have within the crown. I mean, we could spend an entire show talking about the <laughs> internal contradictions. And when you talk about a that book, would be a good I mean, show. A, it would. I, mm -hmm. In fact, let's do it Tuesday. The, yeah. If you look at, if you look at the Bible and all of the claims for contradictions, you know, oh, the Bible's got 101 contradictions that are 1,001 contradictions. The Bible was written over the, over the course of 1,400 years on three different continents and three different languages, at least three different languages that we're aware of, and by over 40 some odd authors. And you're going to claim, well, that's got contradictions in it. And you're not going to look at your own book that was written over the written, quoted, revealed over 23 years to one man in one language in right. one region and you're going to say and you're going to make a complaint about the other one really mm -hmm. really we call that it begins with an H and ends with hypocrisy is what it is, is the word that i'm looking for or quran tradition <laughs> <laughs> i'm writing that down quran quran tra yeah uh kudos to al fadi on that one that's al fadi okay, okay. I was wondering oh, where that it? Off of. oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, where was um, the lady that used to um, produce this show for me on, on Sundays, Kel Fritzi. She called people that go out and commit these acts of violence in the name of Allah. She called them Quranimals. And I was like, well, that was such a good thing. But that, that's really. She called them what? Say it again. Quranimals. Quranimals, okay. Quran, Quran animals, Quranimals. Sure. Kind of the people who act like animals using the Quran as justification. All right, let's back over to this one and look at uh, where the story comes from. It comes from the uh, Infancy Gospel of Thomas. Um, it's a story from the second century. As you have Jesus in the cradle, Jesus speaking so others can understand, and he's speaking as an authoritative figure, even as an infant. And there's nothing like it. Don't you think that this would have been made a, a somebody uh, would have made mention of that before? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. That is just, I don't know. It's sad. Okay. And let's see here. Well, they're Here's just turning a blind eye to Islam and Islamists these days. 
you know, for fear of being called names, for fear of sh being shamed, you know. Yeah, but yeah. we're speaking it, it so that the Muslims will know the truth and they'll, you know, they'll come to Christ and he'll set them free. Yeah, I was, was, was going to have Go ahead. I'm sorry. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy face, O Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I have... Uh... I have all kinds of other ones that uh, we could cover, but, uh, you know, I, it, we, we don't have enough time. So let's just uh, jump right over to the an anachronisms. Well, actually, let me do this. Let's <clears throat> I want to jump over because we've covered the anachronisms uh, fairly thoroughly on um, on the Tuesday show. Uh, so let me jump. Can you give down. the definition of that word for other people? An anachronism. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Okay. The, when we say the Quran is anachronistic, and it contains anachronisms, what that means is is that you are taking a an event, uh, an object, a custom, or something, and placing that in a time period in which it does not belong. And the the, the easiest way to remember this is that you know if I sat there and told the story of the pilgrims coming to the Americas um, and talked about how they were persecuted and how they had to get on two ships to start off with the Speedwell and the Mayflower. And as they're coming across the, the Speedwell uh, springs a leak, they got to go back and then they have to figure out, okay, who's going to go now. And then they come across the North Atlantic and now they're in the middle of the fall and you have all these storms They get blown off course. And when they get blown off course, they can't figure out where they are because the battery has died on their GPS. And then they finally arrive in there Plymouth in, uh, in Massachusetts. And there they spent the one. So if you tell this whole story, but there's one like thing in that. there, one thing in there that does not belong. That is an anachronism. So the GPS is an anachronism, and this is where you find stories within the Quran that have these events, these people, these uh, uh, things that just simply, uh, simply do not belong. Okay, or you could say a Roman. Well, that would be interesting. You know, they had to call on their cell phones. They had to send a drone to. <laughs> to pick up, you know, uh, yeah, pick up uh, supplies to uh, fix the leak. <laughs> it's, like, it's like saying a Roman soldier has a collection, a collection of cough in the in the Punic Wars. That would be like a thing. Uh -huh. Like, well, you know, okay. <laughs> Isa, I don't know if you can see my screen. Let me see here. But look what I put here. Oh wow, that's funny. A Roman soldier <laughs> shooting some with a gun was one of them. Would be an anachronism. But. Uh, yeah, so those are anachronisms. And the anachronism, we're not going to go through the anachronisms. We're going to jump back over here because I want to go to some of these convenient verses because these are, I want to say these are a little more fun. Um, let's see here. Convenient. Let's see. Was an invention of Muhammad? Revelations of convenience. So let's jump over here. Verses that only satisfied him and his lust and nobody else. Let me put this back up. Laser pointer. There we go. So ability, you find him having the ability to commit adultery in the Quran, sanctioned by the Quran. Um, tell his dinner guests to go away. You guys are bothering me. This is not for me. It's from Allah. Permission to gauge in slavery. Marriage to the wife of his adopted son. And uh, then I'm going to go through a hadith uh, where... Uh, Gabriel is telling Muhammad some bad, some bad information. Okay, so let's look at 66, 1 and 2. Why banest thou uh, that which Allah hath made lawful for thee, seeking to please thy wives? And Allah is forgiving, merciful. Allah hath made lawful for you absolution from your oaths of such kind, and Allah is your protector. He is the knower, the wives, the wise. So let's look at what's happening here. Muhammad is caught having sex with his slave girl, Mary the Copt, in the bed of Hafsa, I believe it is. It's one of his wives. And what, what is sad about this is that we had a Muslim on the show about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago it's been now. Um, Nassam Ghafur, I think it was. I think it was Nassam. Who said no, or maybe it wasn't Hassan, maybe I'm giving, attributing that to somebody else, but he said that, well, Mary was actually his wife at the time. And that's not true because of what we find in this verse. Because the rest of the civilized world realizes that it's wrong to not 
commit adult to commit adultery. So what does Muhammad do? He does what is natural for most people. He says, "Hey, look, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. I won't ever do it again." Well, <coughs> excuse me. So someone not from the civilized world tells him that it's okay to have sex with a slave girl in the bed of one of your wives. This is a problem. So when you get a revelation, say, "Hey, look, it is okay. It is perfectly permissible." For you to have intercourse with a woman that is not your wife in the bed of your wife. And, oh, by the way, when you do this, they can be slaves. No problem with that. And then you're telling you that adultery is perfectly okay as long as it's somebody your white hand possesses. So the bottom line here is, is Muhammad receives this revelation when he's caught literally with his pants down. And he promised, or not this revelation, but he promises his wives, I will never do it again. But then he receives a revelation. What does the revelation say? Let's go back to the revelation. What does that say? Allah hath made for you absolution of your oaths. Why would you do wow. that? Wow. Because you're wow. trying to please your wives. That Jeez. is about as sick as the day has come. And you're going to, the day is long, and you're going to tell us that this is okay? This is. Oop, let me get this off here so you can see what my last comment here is. That is demonically inspired blindness. When you say committing adultery is okay. Yes, yeah, lasciviousness, the license to sin, you know. That's exactly what he gave him, license to mm -hmm. sin. Yeah. And, you know, Christ and, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit through Paul warned us of this, you know, even has that word. So what what does uh, the devil do? Yeah, I'll take this word and I'll make sure that I'm going to pervert all these Arabs in my in this area. And you know exactly what he does. Yeah. It's so sad. You know, I mean, they're Satan is literally trying to pervert the dear Muslims, you know. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not. Whoop. I heard my voice. Uh, somebody's got me got a window open okay uh let's go to the next one this is uh this is david wood's fine fun funnest one or uh favorite one there we go oh you believe do not enter the house of the prophet except when permission is given to you for your meal without waiting its preparation but then when you were invited then enter and then when you have eaten then disperse and not seeking to remain for a conversation Indeed, that was troubling to the prophet, and he is shy. Notice the prophet is shy of dismissing you. He's shy of saying, get out. But Allah is not shy of the truth, meaning my God that tells me these things is not shy. He's going to tell you to pack your bags and get out. And look at it. It's not for you that you should trouble the messenger of Allah and not that you should merit. Look at that. Now, look what he does here. He says, you don't want to trouble the messenger of Allah. You don't want to trouble me. I'm not saying this. This is Allah saying this. So I'm just telling you what Allah is telling you. And then my wives, you can't marry them. Nobody can marry my wives after I die. Now, how many wives did he have? He had 11 at one time, upward of 13. I think it's like 13, sir. Th 13 I don't think they know. I mean, it's somewhere between 9 and 13 and a whole bunch of concubines. Okay. So if you are the wife, let's say you're little Aisha. Little Aisha is nine years old when he um, bang, bang. Yeah, consummates the marriage with her. Let's be polite about it. Consummates the marriage with her. And then she's 18 when he dies. Now, this poor girl. Man, she's at her prime. Yeah, she cannot get married for the rest of her natural life. My understanding is she lived into her, into her 60s, and she could never marry. Why? Because Allah, according to the Quran, says that if she was a wife of the prophet then or muhammad you can't marry her what kind of bunk is that anyway let's see here all married or forbidden forbidden to you except those captives who your right hand possesses so if you are a wife of muhammad or a the wife of uh, a muslim and you have a sex slave then you're perfectly to do what you want with that sex slave. And that is according to the God of the universe. As long as she's a slave, you can do whatever you want to to her. Now, if you look at the slave trade, and we were talking about that at the beginning of the show, is when we talk about the transatlantic slave trade, where you have the Europeans um, shipping or going to Africa, trading uh 
trading for slaves in Africa and then bringing them to the Americas, two out of every three of those slaves were men that they brought across the Atlantic. And the reason why is because they would have them engage in uh, manual labor. And it, let's, you know, I'm not trying to sugarcoat that at all. I'm saying it was brutal. And a lot of those plantations, especially down the Caribbean, your life expectancy was about two years and you would, you were literally worked to death. So two out of every three slaves coming West was a man. And you had a grand total of maybe 12, 12 million people coming across the, uh, the, the Atlantic the tra in the transatlantic uh, slave trade. But if you look at the uh, Trans-Sahara slave trade going east, upwards of 29 million people involved in this. And the two out of every three of those slaves were women going east. And what was the purpose of sending the women east is to serve in these harems, to serve as sex slaves for uh, these sultans. So when we start thinking about the slave trade and how, e you know, actual, you know, how evil it, it truly was, when you look at the numbers themselves, the numbers themselves tell you how evil it, you know, how evil it was. And a lot of those people that were going eastward in the, in, in the slave trade, the majority of them died. 10, 15 percent. I'm not trying to minimize it. Don't don't get me wrong. But 10, 15 percent of the slaves coming or five to 10 percent. I'm sorry. Five to 10 percent of the slaves coming east. Uh, or west to the uh, to the Americas died on that what they called the Middle Passage. Upwards of ninety percent of these people that were sent eastward died along the way. The men, they weren't just castrated; they had their entire many of them had their entire genitalia removed. So just castrating themselves, that castration in of itself wasn't bad enough. They would cut the, and many of them died from that. So it was just brutal. And then when you start saying that, well, your right hand possesses, um, you know, I'm sorry. That's just sick. That is not from, of, or anything that should be attributed uh, to God. God, our creator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, this next one. Quran, what is this? Oh, what is this? I don't think I put down the... Well, let's just put it up here. Okay. And when thou saidest unto them, Allah hath conferred favor, conferred, keep thy wife to yourself. Okay. So here's where he's where he's marrying the wife of his divorce or the divorced wife of his adopted son. And the reason why is because let's go here. So he said he sees Zainab half naked. Muhammad gets excited. She hears him. Or Zayd, well, she hears him say this, and then Zaid hears about this. Muhammad says, "Ah, keep your wife." What do you know? So Zaid divorces her, and notice the words that are used for that. Um, I don't. Is it in that? Yeah, it's um, gross. Say it, man. Uh, say it when he had performed the necessary formality of divorce for better. Zaid had performed. And that's not. It says one of the translations says. Once you're done with her, once you've used her up, right, your, right, yeah, your yes. needs. Once you're done with her, with, her, with your, your needs. needs. In Arabic, in Arabic, it's uh, the mazid uh, yeah. It's a disgusting. Thing. Yeah, what what, what, what does that mean in English? When he did, he was he was he finished finished with her. He, okay. When you're when he, finished with her, when wow. He, when he, he found no more use for her, I think is how it was translated. Yeah, like okay. a, what's the verse number? Like a six toy. Like I a don't six have toy. it down. That's what I'm kind of, I'm uh, I'm down on myself for this. I made a gross error. I didn't cite the verse number. I feel like a certain imam writing it's a book. 3350. Right okay, 3350, okay. <laughs> I don't oh, provide my source. Hey, where's Rad? Where's Rad? Red's this. taking the day off. I think uh, okay. he's got to he's got to start his new job tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's excited about it. He, he sent me these pictures of this shotgun that he bought, and I think he's just trying to make me jealous. Is all he's doing. <laughs> and you know why I think he's trying to do that? It's because he made me jealous with it. And this is a really <laughs> cool shotgun. <laughs> That's right, man. He sent he it to me too. Yeah, oh, he, he sent it yeah. to me too. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to what goes on here. So he receives another revelation from God. Well, there's Rad. Speak of the devil. Oh my Rad, gosh. We were just yeah. talking bad about you. That's <laughs> what I heard, so I had to come in. Was, oh, you, oh, you Smack us around a couple times. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, my brother. Okay, so people start talking. And so what is when people start talking saying, look, this is really icky. Muhammad has married the divorced wife of his adopted son. So Muhammad's thinking, well, that's, that's true. That's kind of icky. Oh, wait a second. I get another revelation, and the revelation itself abolishes adoption. And when you Man, wow. About, yeah, when that you start, is so sad. It is. When you start thinking about what uh, is the one thing that we do as human beings that makes us you know, uniquely humane, is that when somebody's child die, or I'm sorry, when somebody's parents die and they're a child, we take them in, we give them a life, we raise them as our own, we give them our names. Yeah, that is part of true religion. And that is part of true religion, according to, what was it, James or Jude? True religion is, you know, you take care of the widows and the orphans. And it he just said, him. nope, you can't do that anymore because I, I got to work my, my penis uh, privileges well, out here. Right? This is the sad wow. thing. It's his so own sad. little proclivities, sexual proclivities, his desires mm -hmm. are, are cha yeah. change, you know, any chance that a child has. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just a little offended right. that, that penis privileges. Next time, could you just say pee pee? <laughs> hey, I can say it bluntly if you want me to next time. Mm -hmm. I will. No, I don't change my words. Sorry, Steve. I say it like it is. I, I, I don't want to hear about <laughs> Muhammad's penis anymore. I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> bro, that, that, that protests too much, bro. <laughs> they don't protest this too much. I mean, I mean, or I can I, say I, his PP privileges. Say... But, you know, we're three years old now here. I'll say PP privileges, okay? Well, well, okay, I, I, I know <laughs> The letters for penis privilege is <laughs> okay. Here's what I want to I want to get into this next one because this next one, if there was any one verse in the entire Quran that clearly demonstrates that Muhammad was a false prophet, it's this one right here, sixty six one. And remember when Jesus, son of Miriam, said, "O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming the Torah which came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be." Mine, Ahmed. But uh, when he came to them with clear proofs, they said, this is a plain magic. Okay, so ask yourself a question. How many prophets out there prophesied of themselves? Let me count. None. Why wouldn't you think also that if one of the apostles heard this, that somebody would have wrote this down? Oh, there's somebody's coming after Jesus, too. We better We better figure this one out. Only a fool, and when I say a fool, I mean a fool would believe that. If you're going to have somebody say, by name, there's somebody that's going to come after me that has my same title, and you believe that that person is given a prophecy that nobody had heard of before, and Jesus was supposedly said this, and you can't believe that this has re been redacted back onto, on, onto Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are truly blind. You are a truly blind. But, 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 but don't Deanna you know it's said, the Holy it, Spirit, it, you silly Kaffir? It's the Holy Spirit, you silly Kaffir, the comforter. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, and it says, remember. I mean, who who is he talk? Who is Allah supposed to be talking to? The Jews, or 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 the or the Jewish Christians? I mean, you know, the word remember is really huge, and uh, it just makes Allah look like he's stumbling over his feet. Remember. Yeah, and remember when you Jesus know, where's, where's the said, proof of this where Jesus said this? Exactly. Prove it, Allah. Prove, yeah. Allah wants proof, right? Prove it if he's talking, if he's being trustworthy and he's saying the truth. But Allah doesn't. Allah preaches it, but he doesn't practice it. Well, I would like to know. You're, that's a great point. I never even thought of yes, that. Yes, it is. Oh, I have. And it, it makes me said, makes me tip. The message, and, okay. And remember when he said this. So he's basically saying, well, he said this. It's not my fault that you guys can't remember this. No, hey, Eric. Yeah, hey, Eric, as I, if we first known it, and and where is that? Where is that? Where's the proof, Allah? If we remember, if we had it to remember, right? If we had it, where is it at, Allah? Such a hey, lie. Such such. Hey, Eric. Anyway. I just want to say something about the about the last one you just the, about the uh, Zainab. Yeah. About the uh, that, you know, I think people knew about know about this, but you know that. First of all, I think he's our three quarters naked. It wasn't half naked. And then, um, 
and then but there but there was another thing too after he said to her you know keep uh, or said to Zed no you keep your wife he went home to the wife that he was afraid of which is Aisha he was scared of Aisha so he went to her her tent you know and he was there with her when the spirit came on him and he had a seizure you know he had, you know and then after the seizure after the seizure it says literally he smiled and when he smiled i just said what happened honey and and he says allah just told me that he married zainab to me he said that and and what's interesting is aisha's reaction mm -hmm. she's the one who said at that point it was then that aisha said i see that your lord hastens to fulfill your desires that's what that's when she said that so anyway i just want to throw that in now what was there's an apologetic for that there's a counter argument for that that and i i agree wholeheartedly with you steve but what what is the what is the islamic response to that where no she's not referring to zainab she's referring to the holiness else. of his desire the perfection of his desire <laughs> Well, I don't, I'm not I'm, sure what well, I, I can't remember how it goes. Some, but Muslims, I, I, say, some Muslims say that uh, uh, Aisha was young and she was Julius. This is why he says that word. She was whatless? Julius. Julius from other women. Oh, oh jealous. Yeah. Jealous. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. she did say that. She was jealous. Because Zainab was beautiful, so she was jealous over her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The bottom line is it's sick. That's that's the bottom line. Okay, now the last one to demonstrate clearly that Gabriel was not who he said he was or that Muhammad was making it all up as he goes along is found in a Hadith. And I've put this up here several times. It's from Sahih Bukhari, uh, Book 60, Hadith 4. Um, or let's see. If you use the English, I guess it's supposed to be volume four, book 55, Hadith 546. But anyway, here's the story where um, that the, uh, Muhammad arrives and they say, oh, well, I'm going to ask you only three things that a, a prophet would know. And of course, the guy that asks this question is, if you know, if, OK, number one, if if this guy knows the answers to these questions that only a prophet would know, this guy that's asking him. Would also be a prophet, you know. Forget that making sense for us, just just for a second, okay? Don't don't and don't then, use logic. Don't 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 use logic and reasoning when when interpreting these things. That's the science of the hadiths. You cannot use logic and reason. Okay, I'll stop right now. So let's look at what it says. He goes, "Oh, well, you know, three things. What are these three things?" I was just messer said to Gabriel. Gabriel has just now told me the answers. Hamdulillah, Allah Akbar. From amongst the angels, let me, where's my pointer at? Doggone it. That doesn't matter. You can see this. Uh, let's see. From the, the enemies of the, of course, he's got to get his little anti-Semitic rub in there. The enemy of the Jew, of the uh, Allah's messengers, the Jews, or amongst all the angels is the enemy of the Jews. Okay. Gabriel's, the, oh, that's it. Gabriel's the enemies of the Jews. Never mind. Um, the first portent of the hour will be a fire. Okay. So how are you going to prove that? Prove it. You can't. But then he goes on, the first meal in paradise will be fish liver. Well, we all know what fish liver tastes like, so our liver tastes like, so I'm not wanting to go to that paradise. But I don't, I don't, I can, I can honestly say I do not know what fish liver tastes like, and I really would not want to even try it, dude. It's an aphrodisiac, though. Is it? Yeah, okay, I'll just, yeah, that's okay. I'll an pass. aphrodisiac for who? For fish. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So we know this is not true, but let's just pretend because there's no way to prove it. You know, it might not be fish liver. It might be cow liver or pig. Oh, it'd be pig liver would be even better. But anyway, we don't, we can't prove these two things. But what we can prove that he's wrong is for the resemblance of the child to its parents. If a man has sexual intercourse with his wife and gets discharged first, the child will look like the father. And if the woman gets discharged first, she will resemble her. And then the guy says, Hamdulillah, Abdullah bin Salam said, I testify that you are 
the messenger of Allah, wow. Allah Akbar. So, you know, there's, there's so many things that are wrong with that. But the bottom <laughs> line is, the bottom line is, is that we know this is not true. And because of genetics today. But on top of that, notice how he gets these revelations whenever he needs them. And he even gets this one in a Hadith. And this Hadith is Sahih. It's supposed to be authentic. So just to say, I mean, when we start saying that, you know, we know that he's not a prophet because of these insertions that we found in the Quran. We talked about that for the first hour of the show. The last half hour, we've been going through these convenient revelations. You can clearly see that if you're looking at the Quran objectively anyway, that there's no way in Hades that this guy is a prophet of any kind. And to say otherwise, and if you were to, to say that, again, is subjecting yourself to all kinds of criticism, name-calling, bullying, uh, phobia-type things, racist bigotry or whatever. But to say the truth, even if it is offensive to you, should never be made I wouldn't say illegal, but not in vogue. Let's just put it that way. It should never, if proclaiming the truth should never be something that people should be afraid to do, whether they be afraid physically to do it in Islamic majority countries, um, culturally uh, afraid to do it in countries where you're ostracized for apostatizing from Islam, or um, uh, professionally, where people will try to get you fired for proclaiming uh, the truth about Muhammad, about the Quran, and about Islam itself. So you should never uh, be doing that. All right. That's all I have on the slideshow, unless you guys wanted to go through anachronisms. Did you guys want to go through those two? Sure. That would be great. Okay. Let me see if I can find them. Did, did you talk about, like, when the Muhammad... Uh, you know, when his wife caught him cheating and then he 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 went on a pity party for a few days and then uh, Allah revealed to him that, that he his could. wife, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he did. Didn't, didn't, didn't you, Eric? Yeah. Uh, okay. It was honey, though. It was honey, man. No, he was refusing himself yeah. honey. Oh, wait, that's no, that's not it. real meaning is, you know, man. Uh, see, you guys just don't know. Well, my yeah, banner style, that which Allah hath made lawful for these. That was you're talking about, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's one of the most obvious lies told by. You know, if I was to do that to the queen, okay, and I would come home, and you know, I'm caught red-handed, and I would say, "Look, God has told me that it's okay for me to do that, and I should not make those type of promises to you." What is the life expectancy of this capper? If I they, 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 they'd be finding in various places of Iowa, you know, piece by piece, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But, yep. um, but, but I don't know about <laughs> I think she would just find the corn. You, the, there's a cornfield that sits about a quarter mile. Down. I'd probably bury it out in the middle of that thing. I mean, chipper shredder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Dude. laughs> Shallow grave. But, 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 but you're not, you're not a prophet. Don't you get that? He had prophet privileges. Well, what if I claimed to be one? But I when mean, he said that, he would have made himself a prophet. You can't be. God you, <laughs> but you can't be because he's the last of the prophets. Don't you get it? No one else sees the beauty of Islam. I'm telling okay. you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You're right. Okay, I get it. All right. You know, you know, and that's an affront. Like in uh, in Acts, there was prophetesses. You know, the daughter of I forget the, the the dad's name, but you know, and his his daughters were prophets. You know, and uh, you know, oh, man. Moses, uh, Moses prayed, you know, would would to God that all of his servants, you know, be prophets and, uh, you know, for him, for for the Quran to claim that he's the last of the prophets, the seal of the prophets is so ridiculous because God's still moving and and uh, and working through his body to bless others and the body of Christ. Well, this you is know. why um, Elisha Muhammad was a prophet for the nation of Islam, don't you know? <laughs> Use that logic anyway. I, mm -hmm. I, it's, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of like a slap in the face to uh, Islam in general, you know. So, right. Um. <laughs> I agree. All right, let's go up to these anachronisms. Anachronisms are always fun. Um, demonstrate the absurdity of the absurd. Let me bring this up here. 
Okay, anachronism, this is the definition, is the custom event object to which it does not belong. It's attributing it to a, uh, what it doesn't belong. George Washington driving a car into Washington, D.C. Well, Washington, D.C. didn't exist when George Washington was inaugurated, so that would not be true. But it would also not be true because there was no cars at that time. So the car would be the anachronism. Pilgrims using GPS and Roman soldiers shooting someone. All right. So let's look at some of these anachronisms. Coins. We talked about this the other night on the show uh, where we look in Sir 1220. It says Joseph sold him for a miserable price for a few dirhams counted out in socialist estimation. When you look at this, dirhams, which is a derivative from uh, the Greek dot drachma, didn't exist prior to the 12th century BC. Joseph is thought to live around the 18th and 19th century BC. And the second thing is, is that, okay, so number one, you're using a currency that uh, was not invented, uh, plus the fact that coins themselves at this time were not invented. When you look at the shekel, the shekel, the shekel is a weighted or is a weighted amount. It's not a coin. It is a, an amount. So when we think of Genesis describing the, act, the the exact currency, the exact price of a slave at that time, you will find that it is correct in the Bible, and you would find that uh, Muhammad exactly X Y Z. The Quran is busting itself on this one. Uh, what's the next one? The furthest mosque. We talked about, we've talked about that frequently on here. Uh, glory to him who made his servant go on a night journey on his winged pony from the sacred mosque to the remote mosque. Hold on. I wanted to look at something here. I want, where'd it go? Um, I do not have it. I thought I did. Anyway. Uh, what's that? It's 17 one in the Quran. Is, is that what you're Is that the for? verse? Yeah. Um, but that's not what I was looking for. I was looking at, there was a commentary that was made on this that John Isaac had sent me before where the Quran or the furthest mosque is actually a mosque that is within, I don't know, driving distance to Mecca. Yeah, or something. it's in a place called Jarane. It's about 23 miles from Mecca. Okay. And there was an article that he had cited. I thought I bookmarked it, but I didn't. He's probably sent it to me several times, and I keep forgetting to bookmark it. Okay, so this is thought to be the Al Alaska Mosque in Jerusalem. The problem is, is Al Alaska Mosque was not built until 705. The Dome of the Rock, which isn't even a mosque, it's just a shrine, uh, was built in 691. And there we go. The Al Alaska Mosque was built in 705. So the furthest mosque did not exist when um, I thought a shekel was a coin. Yes, X, Y, Z. A shekel today is a coin. It, it is, is a coin. Well. Yeah, in uh, Israel. However, however, at that time, a shekel was an, a weighted measure. It was an amount of weight. I'm not exactly sure what the other measurements were called, but a shekel was um, an amount. So if you say I got you know 20 shekels for this slave, that means that you got... 20 shekels would be like an ounce or a uh, pound or whatever. You got 20 ounces of gold for it would be a good way to describe that. Um, hey, Eric, hey, Eric yeah. there's just one mistake in your, uh, it's not El Aska, it's El Aksa. El what? El Aksa. The Q is first. Oh, right here? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, because all of them say, say, say it Aksa. again. It's yeah, El I think I'll. Aksa, Aksa, Aksa. Say it again, Aksa. Steve. El Aksa. Okay. Like the Q is an X. Al Aksa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, because I, I was saying it wrong as well. Al Aksa. I, I, I brought corruption hey, I in the land. No, I misspelled it twice. Look at there. Well, because it's so confusing, the, the spirit behind Islam. I found myself doing that, too, trying to spell certain words in Islam, you know. And, you know, I go through three or four times trying to fix it, and, and I just realize, wow, this is spiritual. It's, it's, it's confusion, you know, when you're trying to even engage with Islam. You, you know, you start discerning the spirit of confusion, you know, and et cetera. Well, I just fixed it, so we are no longer 
confused. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Good, you casted it out in Jesus' name. Yes. Ox, <laughs> All right, what do we got else for? What else do we have for an anachronism? What do we got here? Uh, yes, we did uh, to see make the coats of mail balancing well the rings of chain armor. Uh, so here you have King David, who lived in the 10th century BC, uh, wearing chain mail. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is chain mail uh, was not invented until the 5th century. He's only a half a millennia off, but hey, you know, this is the word of God. This is divinely inspired, um, and it's on a different continent, oh, by the way, <laughs> where the Celts were making it in England, jolly good England, um, 500 years later. That's the first instance that they find of chainmail being used. So we're not going to let archaeology or anything like that get in the way of, of the Quran being divinely inspired. That's an anachronism. Crucifixion, practice in Egypt. Well, according to Sir 1241, you have uh, uh, crucifixion being practiced at the time of uh, Jacob. Uh, no, not Jacob. Joseph, I'm sorry. Joseph being uh, crucified or is in uh, the Pharaoh's court. And here you have the story of the the uh, wine or the cupbearer and the baker. And they end up crucifying one of them. And then in chapter 20. Uh, verse 71, uh, it happens again. I think that's at the time of Moses. And look at there. I'm going to cut off your hands and feet alternately. Do you believe that? I shall crucify you on the trunks of palm trees. And you should know. Okay, so you have two instances of crucifixion being used at the time of Pharaoh, one in the 18th century B.C. and one in the 10th, 14th century B.C. So there is. Is, I'm go sorry? ahead. No, no, go ahead. Problem with that is. The problem is, is that it was not used uh, by the Romans for 500 years. Of, it was a oh, well, hold on a second. It was not. It was developed by the Persians. I don't know if I have that in there. Do I have that on another slide? Uh, here we go. There we go. Persians in the sixth century. There's the citation for it. It was first invented by the Persians. So here you're only 800 and uh, 1200 years off. So when we think about crucifixion being foreordained by God in uh, the Quran chapter 5 verse 33 um, you I mean it's just I don't know I, I really don't know what else to say about that when you when you can have such a blatant a blatant error like that um, what do I well, got? Well, you know, they're trying to make it look like, see, you know, we're not the only ones doing this gross stuff. Those did it. They're just trying to Islamicize uh, Pharaoh and everybody else. You know, it's 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 just blatant lies, and we can we can look at history and know that that is not the truth. You know that that once again, Islam is just trying to insult people's intelligence. And especially, you know, the dear Muslims. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to think that where, you know, if you have something that is a known fact of history, I mean, it's, you know, just the coins is an example, or maybe uh, you look at the, the chain mail or something like this, and you know, it's, you know, it's a known fact of history, or at least you cannot demonstrate that crucifixion existed prior to of the 14th or 18th century BC, you would think that there would be some type of humility to say, well, maybe it existed, pre-existed, or existed in some other form. But no, that's not what you get. You're told for even mm -hmm. second guessing this, you're the one that you know you hate. You have all these biases. You're not objective. You know you hate Islam. Well, that's not. That's simply not true. The, the, the fact is, is that I hate lies and lies that damnable lies that lead people to hell. That's what I hate. Yeah, you know, we're reporting know. it honestly. To report it honestly isn't hatred. It's just being honest about, you know, the true report of the matter. You know, so that we don't continue this mess. You know, I mean, let's say if Jesus tarries, you know, we don't want our great, great grandchildren crucifying and cutting off people's hands. No. You know, <clears throat> we're supposed to be leaving a legacy that is better than our own. And that's why we educate. 
Okay, hold on. Darcy put something here. That's uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, you don't Arabic, so you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah she is so that. right. You know, yeah. that's kind of like yeah. What she say? Did you have the that Allah? Did you have that Allah gave kings to Israel before they were a nation, Eric? Uh, what is that? Moses? I'm not, oh, Eric Moses told the Israelites. Israelites right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, because wait, you, you, you silly Kaffir, you, you just these are all chronic miracles. Don't you understand that? See, history, everybody's science, everybody got it wrong. But uh, that's why Muhammad Islam. came. Well, that's why Muhammad came to correct everyone's errors. Correct so, everything you know, else. Yeah. Exactly yeah. for for, that, for for the the past, the present, and the future. Everything is right in Islam. Everything else is wrong. Don't you get it? It's that simple. You know, for for their pride to be just so blatant, you know, no wonder so many dear Muslims are leaving Islam and, uh, you know, because it's just so much in your face, the pride that it's finally coming against them and they're going, I'm out of here. You know, I want truth. And that's what happened with my son is he's been crying that for about like four years now. I just want my friends and, you know, my dad to just be honest with me, be honest. I just want the truth, mom. I just want the truth. And I had the opportunity to tell him Jesus is the truth, son, you know? So no wonder they're leaving because that pride of Islam is so big, so in your face. Well, for every, well, I mean, for the reverts or the converts here in the West, do people converting to Islam, do people apostatizing if in Islam it's a wash? Um, you have just as many so people definitely. converting to Islam as you have people. So watered it down. Right. It, actually, 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 the smart ones leave and the dumb ones yes. leave. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Not, not well, the that. smart the smart I ones are seeing it being worked out in their countries, and they're like, "Whoa, uh, uh-uh, I cannot live in, under this no longer." And a lot of times, it's the women that are exposing Islam, you know, because they're seeing the injustice that's happening with the children about being married at a young age, you know, and, and so did, forth. Did you, guys, did you guys see the apostate prophet video where he interviews a woman who went on Hajj? And she's talking about just the total sexual harassment that women suffer on in Hajj. They get groped, molested, rubbed up against, you know, what men with no un- wearing no underwear and wearing a bathrobe. I mean, it's pretty disgusting. She said this is a very common thing. But but I actually have a, a, a well, you can actually Google this stuff. I think it's still on YouTube. It's a uh, it's an audio, but it's well, it's on YouTube video. It's an audio of a conference back in the 1990s, late 1990s, in Ch- at Chicago University, where all these sheikhs came together to try and figure out why so many um, reverts leave Islam after a couple of years. And it turns out that they, but most of their most of the people who join Islam join in prison, and they join it as a gang. This is according to them. And as soon as they get out of prison, they quickly leave that gang. It's kind of funny. That's an amusing thing. We should play that sometime. Well, they uh, join those. For, I'm thinking mainly mainly for protection. Oh, of course, uh, of course. Why they would grow, join those? Okay, uh, let's. Uh, we got just a couple minutes left. Let's uh, knock this out here. Okay, another ac- anachronism. This is kind of my favorite. Moses and the S- Samaritans. Now, this is one of the most demonstrably false, um, or demonstrably false anachronisms that we find you have in uh chapter 20 verse uh verses 35 to 88 95 that you have a samaritan leads the people of israel to create a golden calf during the time of moses and this is right at the end of exodus and uh you know when we think of this you you know that the samaritans the samaritans as a people group did not did not develop until the Assyrian Empire carried off the Northern Kingdom in 721. This is historical. This is historical date. And the people that replaced the Jews that were carried off, they didn't carry off the entire population, but the population that was replaced, the Jews intermarried with, and they called them Samaritans. So if you're going to have a Samaritan, now look at the date here, 721. That's when the empire, the, when their, the population was replaced and the people were called Samaritans long after that. But let's just use that as a beginning date, 721. The date of the Exodus is 1450 B.C. Now, that's 500 years, 
five, no, I'm sorry, 700 years. Sorry about that. That's a mathematical problem on my part. 700 years. You have a 700 year span here of a people group that did not exist helping Moses and Aaron or helping Aaron at Mount Sinai build the golden calf. That is a clear anachronism. How can a Samaritan have led Israel astray? It's right there. Okay. All right, next one. Yeah, and our famous uh, imam has an explanation for that, of course. What is that? It, it just meant the land. He said it's just it, it just meant the land, the people from that land, like Syria. I heard him what? say that the other day. What? What do you mean? I don't Yeah. The Samaritans that it just meant the land like it meant in Syria. It didn't mean people. Did, did you guys hear too that the you know in, in Revelation where that woman sits on seven hills? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she's also Samaritan because it says that if she's sitting on seven hills, she must be of some area. <laughs> Some area, okay. Wow, that's you know. Talk about you wanting to change words and Dave, I tell you, you got the yeah. best jokes. Mm -hmm. Don't be right in some area, some area. <laughs> <laughs> Is she sitting on seven big old hills? Oh my gosh, that is funny. Okay, uh, let's. <laughs> Let's go back to this next one. <laughs> All right, Mary and Mary, um, we discussed oh, this on yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, and look, you got all these other verses here. You, you, verse, chapter 20, verse 19, verse 60, or chapter 66, but and uh, 23. That's not where I want you to go. I want you to go to chapter 3, verses 33 to 45. And this shtick that they developed that, well, this is just a referral, a referring to uh, Mary as... Uh, uh, sister as of a Aaron. sister, yeah, sister of Aaron was only kind of a, a, a way to refer to as a brother or a sister, a Christian brother or sister. But they can't get out of that by using those that chapter. Because if you look at um, chapter 30, I don't know if I have it in here. No, I don't have it in here. But if you would read those, read that chapter, it says you have Imram. Well, it's in this diagram here. You have Imran being described in that chapter. You have the wife of Imran being described in that chapter. And you have Mary. Nowhere else in the Bible, um, I believe anyway, and in the Quran, is anybody attributed as being Imran other than the father of Maryam. And that would make her the sister of Aaron and of Moses. So the bottom line is, is that uh, Muhammad... Uh, confuse Mary with uh, the sister as be Mary, the mother of Jesus being the consistor of Aaron and Moses. And if Spirit of confusion. Hadith, yeah, I would like to see what the Hadith says with even Kathir. Steve the, has, Steve showed something of that the other day. Didn't you, you Steve? And it kind of shut uh, Aisha's mouth. Oh yeah. The, 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 Christian, yeah, yeah. the Christian from the Jaron. What happened is somebody went to the Christians of the Jaron and uh, and they came to and they said, uh, "Hey, you guys, you know what? You guys got a big, big boo boo in the in your Quran because you know Mary. Uh, there was a six hundred year gap between Aaron and Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus. They thought it was six hundred years, and they told Aisha, and Aisha said, you lie.' And then it says she she became silent. You know when they said that." But then, then she says, go tell the prophet because he knows best. And the prophet says, oh, yeah, people used to name their kids after prophets back then. That's what... <laughs> so, well, well, see, see, you, you silly Kafirs, don't you understand? When it says the sister of, Mer of, of Aaron, it's, you know, that's how the Jews used to speak back then. You know, when, when they would say, you know, the son of David, you know, it's the same thing. You know, sister of Aaron, that's really what it means. Well, the problem is with that Muslim. I'm arguing now with this is the Christian. I'll argue with my Muslim side because you know I have one. You know, one, one, you know what I mean. Anyway, the problem with that it's still <laughs> anachronistic. It's still anachronistic because guess what? Well, it's still made up because guess what? There is no documentation where Jews ever called anybody a sister of any ancestor. Okay, they would say, "Oh, right. daughter of," 
okay, or oh, son of, but never sister. That is just stupidity. But again, Muslims yeah. never let facts, logic, reason get in the way of a failed argument. But yeah. I'm trying to find that test fear. Uh, test fear by even I can find it. I can find it. 12, chapter, or verse 12. Um, what the heck are they talking about? Honeybees and such? What is this? Maybe the Lord of Orson Wives. Uh, yeah, if you could find that for me, Steve, I'd appreciate it because I, I can't find it. All right. Um, let's see here. Next one. Oh, yeah. Here's a really good one Moses and Haman. You know, Haman yeah. from the story of Vester. Okay. Here you have in chapter 28, verse 50 or 5 through 8. You have Haman acting in the court of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh and Haman are all <laughs> wow. the host of men who were okay of sin. So here you have, uh, in another one, you have Pharaoh said, "O oh, Haman, bake the mud, a lofty tower. I may serve you." Okay, so in a, a lofty tower. Now I don't know. Can you say that this is the Tower of Babel or not? You know, he would only be over off another thousand years if that's the case. But, but right. it, it is in the right area point. geographically, though, because it's in Babylon. So. Right. The, yeah. well, that's what was, they yeah. took from the Bible, you know, that's all corrupt anyway, right? Unless it agrees with the Quran. Okay. The, pro the problem is, is Haman lives in the 6th century. The Jews stopped dealing with Pharaoh, <laughs> according to the Bible, uh, in the 14th century BC. So this is 800 years after the, the fact. Persia is clear on the opposite side of the Arabian Peninsula from Egypt, yep. and the key character here is uh, Esther, Haman, uh, is a Persian name. It's not an Egyptian name. And when you start talking about, it doesn't even appear in any, it doesn't appear in any Egyptian literature, Haman. So if nobody else's name, I mean, you, you find Jewish names uh, uncovered in, um, what's that tell that they dug up? in Goshen. There, there was a, a tell that they dug up in Goshen and they found a book that lists a lot of some, um, Jewish names in it. So it looks like there was Jews at some point in time in Goshen. That's that's another subject. But wow, the fact that's the matter amazing. Is here, yeah, if you would watch. Hold on, I would, let's see here. Let's get these out here. Tim Mahoney, you have patterns of evidence. I think that's where it talks about that. And then you have the Moses controversy, and then you have the Red Sea miracle, part one and part two. I would recommend those videos wow. okay. for, for anybody, especially the first one. The first one is really good um, because it, it talks about how uh, how sensible, sensical it is to have uh, – a, an exodus at at the time because the, the whole thing is is about placing the exodus at the time that it was supposed to happen and then when you look at the moses controversy that deals with the writing and uh, and moses having the ability to um right what is this uh i've, I've got the, i got the hadith when you want to see it yeah go ahead steve go ahead um, and pop it up there i, I just want to say one thing though real quickly about the imran and aaron issue that i've got videos of sheikhs in arabic saying that there were two imrans and that i got sheikhs saying there were two parents and and but the real problem they have is they only got one. <laughs> and so the bible got say two. that again you, you you broke up say your last sentence again the the real problem is they Steve, you're uh, lagging. Oh, uh, lagging, Steve. Oh, really? Lag. Oh. Steve, you turn, turn off your video and turn off. Go, you go to the kitchen. No, he goes to the kitchen. I mean, oh, no. Yeah, go to the kitchen, Steve. The then kitchen. I, when I go, we to the love kitchen, Steve's I kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, now try to say it. Okay, what I was saying. I have videos of sheikhs, imams in Arabic saying there were imams. You see, but go by the stove. Go by the stove. You're still breaking up, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Steve. Turn, okay. off, turn off the video. Turn off the video. Yeah, turn off the video. Try yeah, that. try that. You know what? I'll just show you the. I'll show you that. That. Uh, I'll show you that. Uh, can okay. you turn off your video, and we can probably get your audio okay? 
Okay, let me end the show over here on Blog Talk Radio. Thank you, folks, for coming. Okay. I appreciate you so much. We'll see you on Tuesday uh, at 5 p.m. Central Time. Goodbye. Okay, so it's over. Okay. okay, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, try again, Steve, please. He's Now he's frozen. There he is. Yeah, try again, Steve. Can you hear okay. me now? Yep, okay. Uh, there, all right. So okay. I see your screen. Screenshot. Uh, inshallah, the Hadith related by uh, Muhagri Ibn. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Let me see if I could. Oh, we can't see it no more, Eric. Here, here let me get it. Okay. Oh, he cut it off. Don't blame me. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was off to somebody in the. But you know, uh, it always falls back on you. Late <laughs> July in. Okay, hold on. Who is this? I'm not sure. I, should I go away? Nice. nice. I don't know. No, who, stay. Stay. This is probably. If you're not a Christian, place. please stay. Right? We want them to stay. Absolutely. All right, yes, go ahead, Steve. Yeah. On the, ah. I'm having trouble showing. Oh, okay. Can I show? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, you can see it on the right there. I can yes, see thanks. it. Yeah. I can let me read it. It says when I came to Nazran, they, the Christians of Nazran, asked me, You re you read Sister of Harun, which is Mary, which Harun is Aaron, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. In the Quran, whereas Moses was born well before Jesus. When I came back to Allah's messenger, I asked him about that. And he said, the people of the old age used to give names to their persons after the names of apostle and pious persons who had gone on before them. Yeah. So that's the Hadith are you saying, Sahih Muslim? Uh, fifty three twenty six. Where you lie, you know. Well, we didn't read that part. We didn't see the part where she said, she said you lie. Uh, he's putting it back up there for us to read, and it looks like maybe this is the wheel of death on my part. Let me let me put this back over here no okay let me try bringing it back up hold on steve be patient with me please steve is frozen he's the chosen frozen <laughs> not there steve oh. okay hold on oh there we are okay got it i got it i grabbed it all right so you're gonna need to do something with this over here to make it bigger if you can let me see if i can show you the Hey, go, go stand outside your neighbor's backyard and see, her internet, see if you can get their, get, get their reception. I tell you, everybody from California, it seems like you guys have the worst internet out there. And I'm you guys like, do. It sucks. That. I support it. I support it. And I'm telling you, it sucks, dude. On the back of my Perfect. This is great. All right. So it was narrated by, or from Ibn Jarir, narrated from Yakub, narrated from Ibn. Ulaya, narrator of Saib, I've been, oh, come on. Narr okay. O sister of, uh, the verse reads, O sister of Harun of Surah 1928, does not refer to Aaron, the brother of Moses. Aisha replied to Cobb, You have lied. Cobb responded, O mother of the believers, if you, if the prophet, may Allah's prayers be upon him, has said it, and he is more knowledgeable, then this is what he related. Besides, I find the difference in time between them, Jesus, Moses, to be 600 years. And that's not 600 years. That's 1,400 years. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he said that she remained silent. Wow. Common core math. There you <laughs> go. That's exactly what and it is. The time frame uh, kind of got her. She's like, whoa, okay. See, that, that's in like the Allah, the common core math. How, how could Muhammad have known that? How could Muhammad have known that? It's 600 years you're off anyway. Guys, I got to wrap this up today. Um, on Tuesday, what did we say we were doing Tuesday? The contradiction of the Quran. Contradiction, that's right. Contradiction. There is none. That's a contradiction. <laughs> you have some of you. Get, get right. your memes out. We'll share them because I've got some to share on that. Yeah, bring your contradictions, and you know we'll let everybody share whatever they want to on Tuesday. I got, I have a list, but you know if you guys 
you know, I have one specifically. I'll let everybody go first, and then we'll Woo-hoo. we'll just discuss them as we go along. I mean, I, I've got a list that I've had for probably a couple of years now that was on the net, and I'm pretty sure you can find it on what is it the the Wiki Islam? They have one. Oh yeah, okay. Carm has one. Catholic apologetics or Christian apologetics, something. So it's, it's, it's out there. Okay. Creation. Is, oh. it, is it the creation one? But they've got like two, four, six, eight days, something like that. Is the, oh, you're talking about the creation? Is, well, yeah, it's, no, the creation is, is like there's like, like four different stories for like different days on the air. Well, and here's the funny thing it took longer to create little old Earth versus the whole universe because the whole universe only took two days. I'm not yeah. Saying. Of course. Hey, Rad, are you going to do your video uh, today? I've been waiting. Uh, where's, where's it, Rad, Rad, where's the uh, advert for uh, uh, camel urine? Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, I forgot the about all that. Um, but uh, the, the 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 video. Um, yes, sir. I just I I just found my SD card um, thing, my adapter, and I checked it out. And I don't know, the audio is horrible. I can't get the audio or the video to sync, so I don't know. We might have to try it again. If okay. I I, I've got the whole, I've got that whole video. You want me to send it through um, the Google oh. Drive that no, you and it. Eric has? Okay. No, I, 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 got, I got his end of it, but my video, my, my motorcycle riding video, for some reason, okay. I, I don't know. I, I just, I forgot how, how I do the settings where I can make a separate audio file and keep the same cool video settings but yeah it's it's messed up i didn't work working on my end all right folks okay. bring, we'll your it out. bring your contradictions tuesday and we'll see you all then everybody in chat thank you for coming today we pre- it's always it's always fun to read the the comments that you guys have in there it's always a lot of uh humor and great information too so thank you for everybody that's in chat and all you do, you guys in the panel. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to like, share, and that's right. Yeah, like, share, and subscribe, subscribe, and yep. uh, get the notification bell thing. Do that too. All right. God bless y'all. We'll see you on Tuesday. All right. God bless.